So let's get started. Um, so let's talk about one of, one of the, you know, the, the big issues. You know, why do the franchisees go rogue in the first place? Why do they take things into their own hands? Um, and there's usually three big reasons this occurs. One, uh, an unhappy franchisee will begin to resist the controls that are inherent to the franchise model. And while everybody and every franchisee has kind of their own needs, you know, at a local level and as individuals um, who are running businesses, um, maintaining that, um, you know, agreement to, to, to play by the rules of the franchise is critical. And when they don't, when they don't agree to do that anymore, if they decide not to do it in the first place, uh, it's a slippery slope. So things go downhill quickly. Um, the second big reason is that a franchisee will feel that there is a lack of marketing investment at the local level. So, for example, it's you know it's great for franchisees when you know a franchise runs an ad during the Super Bowl, for example. Uh, but what the franchisee really wants is for the franchisor to invest marketing dollars that will drive sales at the local level. They want people calling them and doing business with them, you know, transacting. So a lot of times they will feel that, hey, you know, the marketing is all about the brand and corporate. Uh, it doesn't help me as a franchisee directly. So that's, that's number two. Uh, number three is that um, maybe the franchisor just doesn't supply uh, with the franchisee's need to be successful. Um, so they might think, well, hey, the, you know, corporate's not giving me enough collateral, uh, you know, for my marketing. They're not making suggestions. They're not showing me how to do this. Uh, there's a broad spectrum of, um, you know, kind of collateral and advice and, you know, consultation that most franchisees uh, want and expect, whether right or wrong, from the franchisor. And what happens is when the franchisee starts to be become a rogue, for lack of a better term, um, things start happening that's, that, <laughs> that is not good. Uh, they go off-brand with their collateral uh, because they're making it themselves or you know, hiring their brother or sister or cousin to do it for them. Um, the messaging becomes inconsistent. Um, you know, the kind of the slogans, the offers, it all becomes uh, disparate and it doesn't make sense <coughs> um, across the brand anymore. And it also leads to a lot of customer confusion. If the customer is seeing one thing from corporate, but when they get an offer from the local level franchisee, it's different, there's confusion there. They might think they're looking at two different offers or working with two different companies. It's just not a good situation. Okay, so those are some of the results of rogue franchisees. So here's an example. Uh, I'll give you two seconds. Can you spot the rogue franchisee? All right, that should be long enough. Um, if you've been in the business for a while, it's, you know, you've certainly seen something like this. Um, obviously, the, the first uh, option here is the one that is corporate approved. It's got the right color theme. It's clear. It's got kind of that uh, next level look and feel to it, whereas the one on the right, uh, store number 1239, it looks like someone did this in Microsoft Paint or just threw something together uh, in Microsoft Word or something like that. Um, the messaging is wrong. Instead of no mosquitoes here, it says we kill your mosquitoes. Uh, <clears throat> it's probably not ideal. The offer uh, is $75 uh, as opposed to $49. And just all the fonts, the branding, the theming, the images, uh, it's not clear, it doesn't look right. So we've all seen this before. It's an ongoing challenge. Uh, again, just some of the points, um, you know, the franchisee will often include their name on the advertisements because they want the call. Um, you know, they'll use a logo off your website uh, because they know that you won't give them the corporate identity assets. Um, which results in poor quality or, you know, blurred images, things like that. And uh, it kind of speaks for itself. It's just not uh, what brand has approved. All right. So with that, I'm going to turn over uh, to Laura Elizabeth Mann, uh, who is with the Hodges Partnership 
uh, as I just mentioned. And she's going to talk about some of the things you can do to combat each of those three issues and resolve them and find a solution that works. So Laura, uh, please take it away. Great. Thanks, Chris. So as you saw on the previous slide, that's not the kind of marketing collateral that you want your franchisees to be creating. Um, really the branding, the brand of a franchise is one of its strongest assets. So things like the collateral we saw on the previous slide are really dilute that, um, that asset to the franchise. So here are some solutions. Um, for franchisees that are resisting the, the control inherent to the franchise model, be clear and upfront that rogue actions won't be tolerated. Set expectations and be clear that creating your own marketing collateral really isn't part of the franchise model. Also, be open to suggestions and feedback, even criticism from franchisees. They don't want to feel like you're parenting them and you're the boss and they have no say in how they're marketing their own business. Um, showcase and lean into successful franchisees who do follow brand guidelines. So really, have them be your spokesperson um, to, to stand up for, for remaining on brand and um, create a franchise roundtable, franchisee roundtable. So maybe that's a quarterly call with a couple of franchisees from each region where it's a Q&A and they can ask questions about marketing or give suggestions. Um, and really the theme here is creating that open line of communication and a relationship between um, the franchisor and the franchisees. So a lot of franchisees also feel like you know, as Chris mentioned earlier, they're spending a lot of money on this big Super Bowl ad, but what does that do for their local franchise business? So they feel that there's a lack of local marketing investment. Um, so some of the solutions is be transparent. If your franchise has mandatory advertising or marketing funds, have a certain level of transparency about how those funds are being allocated to both national campaigns and local marketing investments. Um, collaborate with franchisees. Like I mentioned earlier, it's a relationship, so try to bring them in to collaborate here and there on short and long-term marketing strategies. Um, help them. If you don't already have a system in place for local marketing, help them develop local marketing initiatives. That way you've got your hand in it and you can help ensure that there's some sort of brand control there. And if they don't have templates or don't have a tool to help you, um, review that and they've made their own marketing collateral, review that marketing collateral and their investments in local marketing. That way you can set up a process for if they want to create something on their own, there's a process in place where they submit it to you, you can review and approve or make suggestions or changes. Also a lot of franchisees feel like corporate just doesn't supply them with enough. They want to do a campaign or they want to have a sale in their store or at their location. Um, but they don't have the collateral that they need. They don't have access to the right size images, logos. They want to put together a mail campaign. They don't have you know, the specific size of image that they need. So they'll go and just make it themselves. So instead, be clear about expectations. Be clear about when it's okay to do something on their own and when they should come to you first. Um, if you have a list of vendors that you work with that help create different pieces of collateral, share that list with your franchisees. Um, provide corporate approved materials and consider creating a brand assets library. So what I mean by that is create a folder, a place where they have assets like logos and images of different shapes and sizes that are corporate approved. So if they want to create something, they know exactly where to go. Um, and give them guidelines. Is your brand fun and funny or is it serious and more professional? Um, that's the way that they should be talking about their, their company as their brand. Um, so give them guidelines on voice and tone and style when they're writing on their social sites or on their website, um, every, every piece of collateral that they create. So there's a lot of solutions. We've given you a lot of action items here. So one way to get started executing some of those is considering a white label platform and a white label marketing platform. And what I mean by that is a white label platform is a central website or portal um, created and implemented by the franchisor with corporate approved templates that franchisees can use to create local marketing campaigns. The franchisor working with a vendor sets it up, implements it. It's a central site where everything on that site is corporate approved, it's within brand guidelines, and everything like that. So anything that's created on that white label platform, you can ensure will be within uh, brand standards. So here are some of the 
key benefits to franchisors. And here in a moment, Wendy will walk you through sort of what a marketing, uh, white label marketing site looks like. But um, just to touch on a couple of the benefits, it's easy to use. So it's easy for franchisors to implement it franchise-wide, whether you have five franchisees or 500. Um, localization, so we talked earlier about um, franchisees not feeling like corporate has really invested a lot in local marketing. This white, white label marketing platforms allow franchisees to advertise to their local market. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, using a white label platform guarantees brand control. Anything that's created off of that site, any piece of collateral is on brand. And reporting. Franchisors can also log on and create usage reports to see maybe there are some uh, you know, specific regions where franchisees aren't you know, taking advantage of different marketing campaigns or initiatives. And you can see where the holes are and address them. So let's take a look at one of those, what one of those looks like. OK, great. So um, thanks, Laura Elizabeth. As Chris mentioned um, at the beginning of the call, we work with franchises, agencies, associations, and some of the largest brands in the world. And they've all reached out to us because they've had a common need. And that need has typically been that they're looking for ways to make marketing easy, effective, and affordable for the audiences that they serve. And so we can do this here at Teradel with our white label platform for every door direct mail and some additional direct mail solutions that we are uh, slowly adding to our portfolio. So this is an example of one of those white label sites. This is for progressive insurance. And in this scenario, it was interesting. We actually had an agent, an independent agent in the Midwest, find our site. They transacted and found the solution to be so easy that they suggested we reach out to the corporate office and develop a white label solution to be uh, then launched to the entire um, agency audience nationwide. So that's exactly what we did. So in this example here, we'll walk you through the features uh, and benefits of this solution and just show you some of the key highlights of the white label platform. The first thing I'll show you here is the pricing. So what we hear from a lot of our franchisees is, OK, great, I know I need to spend a certain amount of money on marketing, or I know there's a certain number of folks that I should be looking to hit, but what is that going to cost me? So the first thing that we do for you with the franchise is we go ahead and we tell you what the all-inclusive price is for your direct mail campaign. And the cost is simply driven by the size piece that you select and the quantity. So if someone's looking to stay within a certain budget or, again, reach a certain number of addresses, they can simply use the grid that we have built for you on your site, and they know right away what they're going to pay per piece with postage included. Once they know what size they want to mail and what quantity, the next thing you can look at here is design. So one of the things that we've really talked about here is the importance of staying on brand, protecting your brand, and making sure that your franchisees don't go rogue. So what we do with all of our franchise sites is we work with the corporate office. You send us as many templates as you would like that promote your products and services. We can put them in a bunch of different sizes that qualify for the direct mail solution that we're offering. And then you, as the franchisor, tell us what we are allowed to change and what we're not. So for example, on this piece, you might say the front cover has to stay exactly the same with no changes. But on the back, you're allowed to change an offer, contact information, hours of operation, expiration dates. The franchisees do not actually edit the pieces online. We made a conscious decision here to assign a designer to each franchisee's account to customize the piece for free. That ensures that you don't have a franchisee going to the portal themselves and making edits that you haven't approved. Next, once the franchisee sees the pricing, they see the design options, they can go ahead and click on the target button and start building the area that they want to target with their campaign. So I'll go ahead and just enter our corporate address here and a zip code. And this, for example, could be the address of a retail brick and mortar location. It could be a new market they're looking to get into. You click the Go button. And our system pulls up all the postal carrier route data that surrounds this address. And right within the platform, your franchisees can target by radius, drive time, or even demographics. So just really quick, we'll go ahead and say, if this agent is looking to find uh, residential businesses, or I'm sorry, residential prospects that are within a 10-minute drive time of that location and a five-mile radius, they now see where those borders are. And they can simply select routes within those areas, or they can use our heat mapping solution and apply demographics to find a very specific audience. 
So let's say that this franchisee is looking for households with a minimum income of at least $50,000 and homeowners. Our system will heat map the area and show them which routes in the market have the highest concentration of that audience. Once they've made their selections, they simply save the map. It's now saved to their account. They proceed with picking the print product size that works best for them, and our system walks them through the next step of selecting their design option, the schedule they want to go out in the mail on, and then also their payment options. So really this is an end-to-end -end solution that helps you protect your brand, and it gives your franchisees a really easy way to execute a complete direct marketing campaign in about 10 minutes. And now I'll turn it back to Chris. Okay, great. Uh, Wendy, thank you for that demo. Um, I think that really you know, does a great job showing how effective and controlled uh, a white label marketing platform can be for a franchisor. Um, you know, being able to direct all your franchisees to the same online portal, controlling what they see, what they have access to, uh, but at the same time giving them the materials they need to go out and find that next new customer and generate that cash flow. That's a, a real win-win situation. Um, and I think that's a rarity sometimes when it comes to you know, the franchise or franchisee relationship. Uh, it can be one side or another all too easily. So this is a great win-win solution. Okay, so uh, let's flip back here to the presentation. Uh, so Wendy just walked us through the white label marketing platform that's used by uh, one of the biggest brands out there. And what I'd like to do now is open it up uh, to a, a question and answer session. So we've received a few questions um, through the portal, uh, and we'll go ahead and get started with those. If you want to ask a question uh, in your GoToWebinar portal, you can uh, either use the chat or the questions module, and uh, we'll answer your questions uh, live here on the webinar. So uh, first question uh, for Wendy, actually. Uh, how much does it cost to launch the white label platform that, like, like the one you just showed us? Sure, so it's a great question, and we have a number of different packages that are available with our white label platform. We have some that are actually free if there is very little customization needed, and we have some that can be you know, upwards of you know, a couple thousand dollars. It really depends on the type of customization you're looking for, and also the access that you give us to your franchisees. So if you have any interest and you're looking for the different options, at the end of the webinar we'll give you my contact information, and I'll be happy to go through those options with you. Okay, great. Um, all right, so it looks like there's probably a solution for, you know, whether you're a new franchise or you've got, you know, as Laura Elizabeth said before, if you've got 500 locations, uh, it sounds like a white label solution could, you know, fit kind of every need. Yeah, we've had solutions actually for as few as 50 franchisees and we've grown with them and we have some that have upwards of 500. So there really is a solution for any brand and what's great is as you, uh, if you're a new franchise and you have an emerging brand, you know, it's great for us to help grow along with you. And if you have an established brand, but you don't have a solution to this specific program, the Every Door Direct Mail program, we have something really for every franchise audience. Okay, great. Um, next question, uh, and Laura Elizabeth, I'll let you take this one. Uh, the question is, is it ever okay to let a rogue franchisee go off-brand? Uh, and what do we do if they refuse to cooperate with us? Sure, thanks, Chris. Um, so the first answer is probably no. Um, prob you know, they shouldn't be going off-brand. I guess you know, it's on a case-by-case -case scenario, but um, my first instinct is to say no. Um, you really want to make sure that they're staying on-brand. But you know, I think there's a certain level of freedom that should come with um, for each franchisee in their local store. So not necessarily going off-brand, but if they want to do specific things like employee of the month or, you know, and have some signage about that. Something like that I think is okay, but making sure that anytime they use the brand it's not stretched out or, you know, they're not just creating their own messaging or slogans. Um, and the second, what was the second part of the question? So the second part of the question is what do you do if they refuse to cooperate with your brand guidelines? Okay. Um, well, first off, be clear about the brand guidelines from the get-go. As soon as they uh, you start a relationship with them, be sure about the, the, the guidelines for your brand. 
And if they refuse, I'd say, you know, exhaust all your options. We really focused a lot on talking about creating a relationship with your franchisees and having open communication. So, so try to, to come to an agreement um, before taking it any further um, up the corporate ladder, so to speak. Um, and, and try not to, to damage the relationship. If they, re if they really won't listen, you know, the last resort would be always to take it up the ladder to, uh, to the corporate headquarters. Yeah, there's, you know, uh, I've got a little experience with that too. So once in a while you get a franchisee, it turns out they're just not a good fit for the, for the brand. Um, you know, um, a, a solution becomes unattainable. And, you know, I've seen, even here locally, there, there was a big donut chain. Uh, everyone knows them. They're national. And the franchisee and the franchisor, um, you know, they were kind of going at it, and it kind of became public uh, because people loved, you know, going there to get their donuts, but they didn't know why they were closing down all of a sudden, all this kind of stuff. Um, so in, in rare cases, the ultimate solution is, you know, going through the legal process, um, and that's something only you know that can only be determined on a per situation basis. But usually, uh, if you get the right people and you've got you know reasonable people involved, you can you know reach a, reach a solution. Um, so um, that's the general recommendation: is work together, figure it out. Now, um, there's one more question. Uh, when you jump in, if you have anything to add to this, but uh, the question is. Is there a white label platform that does more than just postcards? Um, with, with the solution that uh, Wendy demoed to you, the one that Teradel offers, um, she showed you the direct mail piece of that. There's also some new products that you can integrate into that same system, such as email marketing. Um, and I think there's some other options like uh, social media, like Facebook advertising that are either launched or coming soon. So the idea is that you build a portal you customize it with the services and products and collateral that you want, and then you can roll it out you know, to all these different types of media channels, whether it be direct mail or social or even mobile advertising. Um, is that accurate, Wendy? Yeah, there's one additional product that's available right now through the site. It's actually our new mover product. Okay. And so that's one that for um, franchises in particular, if we think about when people start establishing their spending habits, it's usually within you know, the first one to two months of them moving into their homes. So we have a way that once you select your every door direct mail areas, we can tell you how many new movers actually move into those same carry routes every month. And with one click, your franchisees can go on a set it, forget it, welcome to the neighborhood program, making sure that every new address in their market knows that they're there. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, new movers, uh, perfect opportunity there for franchisors. I mean, everyone's looking for, you know, products and services ranging from, you know, furniture for their new home. Uh, healthcare, you know, pediatricians, whatever. Um, so that's great. So that that that's an example of a great marketing product that you can kind of bolt on uh, to your white label platform. So uh, it's about finding the platform that's right for you and then customizing it from there. Um, okay, so those are three great questions. Um, I think that wraps up the Q and A session for now. Um, so with that. Um, We'll go ahead and wrap up the webinar. Uh, if you have any questions or you'd like to get in touch with uh, an expert when it comes to uh, you know, branding and white label platforms, um, feel free to reach out to us. Um, I would encourage you to reach out to Wendy Urquhart, uh, who you just uh, had the pleasure of uh, doing the demo with today. Uh, her information is listed on this slide, so I'll give you a second to uh, jot that down. Um, I will also email this video uh, of this webinar to everyone who attended today. So if you don't catch it now, don't worry. But uh, reach out to Wendy if you have any questions about this. Um, Teradel, uh, you know, we're, we're the guys hosting the webinar for you today. Uh, we help a lot of franchisors across every industry you can imagine. Um, we made the Inc. 5000 for the eighth consecutive year this year. So. Uh, we're a, a great solution and resource for you if you do have any questions. Uh, and with that, we'll say thank you. Uh, Laura Elizabeth, Wendy, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we hope you got a lot out of this. So we'll see you next time.